the worst version of a dam collapse was deliberate. It's from a different era in China. In 1930s, Chiang Kai-shek yep. was fighting a war against the Japanese yeah. and decided, well, we could flood this area by tunneling through these dams and bursting them. And it stopped the Japanese, but it killed 800,000 people. You're focusing on the negative. It stopped the Japanese. <laughs> 800,000. Biggest uh, weapons of mass destruction that we have. Or that we've used. Yes, and that we've used, yeah. But they're sitting all around the world. And dams are great. Dams do a lot of wonderful things. Mm -hmm. But uh, we can have a conversation about them, I think. I just did. One quote from uh, someone that was at the scene at the time said, it, it, it was like the sky was collapsing. Like a phrase like that is really good because you think about it and you go, wow, and then you think, what the fuck does that actually look like? Yeah. The sky is collapsing. For starters, the sky isn't made of anything. Yeah, no, it's not How there. Can you can't touch it. Not anything collapse. But by 1 a.m. on August the 8th, 1975, there was probably nothing that they could do to stop it. It was the biggest technological disaster ever and one that you've probably never heard about. Welcome to The Wholesome Show. A podcast that tries to desperately plug the whole of science when disaster is imminent. And you know what? I'll plug it even if it's not. <laughs> the Wholesome Show is me, Will Grant. And not him, Rod Lambert. I forgot my name there. Yeah, that's right. We've probably been building dams for thousands of years. Oh. The oldest dam that we've got good evidence for, of like a sizable sort of thing, is the Jawa Dam. Uh, it's about uh, 5,000 years old. Sorry, I'm just revisiting your opening now and going, oh, God, <laughs> hold up this piece of wood. <laughs> You get behind me and hold my back. That's horrifying. <laughs> the Jawa Dam in uh, in Jordan. Yep. It's about five thousand years old. There's probably evidence of like smaller scale river structures and stuff like that. Yep. That's that's much older. Like beaver dams. Yeah. Uh, yes. But this was a sizable sort of dam. Like mm. it was um, in the tens of meters high or something like that. But if there ever, if ever there was an era of the dam, it was the middle of the twentieth century. Yes. Between 1950 and 1980, the world just went. Damn mad. I mean, they went, damn. They went, damn. They went, damn. Ten times increase in the world's dam capacity. Oh. Went from uh, 500 cubic kilometres in storage <laughs> to 5,000 cubic kilometres in storage. And I know you can visualise a cubic kilometre easily. Yeah, it's like when you get all the beads in one hippie commune multiplied by 400 years stacked up on top of each other. Yeah, that's it. That's that's the yeah. common the metric standard for it. standard cubic hippie beads. It doesn't matter. It no. doesn't matter. The cubic kilometre is irrelevant. It just – over 30 years, we went 10 times the capacity. They, <sighs> just, they were just building dams everywhere. And uh. everyone got on, in on the act. You got Democrats – and dictators, you know, people in, in, in the developing world and in the developed world. You got, yep. you got politicians in Australia, in America. Mm. You got politicians in, in the Soviet Union, all throughout Africa, everywhere. Everyone is building dams. Small South American countries. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, you know why? I mean, it's a, what, it's a triumph of humanity over nature. Oh, yeah. Modernity over backwardness. They look cool too. Concrete over forests. <sighs> That's a victory I want. But also they're cool. Like, I mean, you stand on a dam and you look over and go, Ooh. "Oh, there's a lot going on." Oh yeah, like and they're, they're remarkable. I've only been to like medium-sized large dams, and I know I know there are vast dams out there. Like like uh, I was watching a video uh, on the Three Gorges Dam the that, other day. That one. Do you remember Gladiator? They get to Rome for the first time, yep. and, and one of the other slaves alongside Russell Crowe says, "I didn't know men could build things like this." I was watching the video <laughs> on the Three Gorges Dam, and I was like, "I, I did not know. I did not know we could do something <laughs> like that." Yeah, 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 yeah. Everyone around the world was loving dams. Yeah. They're, they're, they're like celebrating. It's impossible not to go, damn, all the time. Like impossible. It's killing me. <laughs> My head is hurting. So I said, you know, uh, dictators got in on the act. Of course they did. Uh, Mao, Chairman Mao, leader of the Communist Party in China. After they came to power in 1949, he was like, well, dams it is. We are yeah. We're going to – do what, a lot of these in China. Went, what wouldn't an emperor do? Yeah, what wouldn't an emperor do? Well, they didn't in the past do a lot of dams. This is what I'm saying. He was a genius. And he ordered, you know, from he came to power in 1949, from like 1950, let's let's slam out the dams. As There's much a river as there. Why the fuck haven't we blocked it yet? Well, for a lot of good reasons. Obviously, they wanted development. So they were like hydroelectricity. They can, they, dams can do that. Yeah, That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 
irrigation. You know, you can you can block off a whole lot of water and then you can irrigate more areas. Yes. But also China is famously flood prone. So lots of dams should help that. Dams absolutely can help with floods. Sure. Absolutely can. Well, they depends. hold that water. They hold it, water. It depends. They hold water. It depends. I'll give them that. Um, oh, and put people to work as well. In fact, after he swam across the Yangtze River in 1958, that was to prove that he was still, you know. Virile. Virile, yeah. I can swim. I can swim. How old was he then? 109. I don't know how old he was in 1958, but he swam across the river to show that he can swim across rivers, and then he wrote a poem about his obsession with dams. Great plans are being made. Walls of stone will stand upstream to the west. The mountain goddess, if she is still there, will marvel at a world so changed. Now, that's more like haiku, not that he'd ever admit that because that would be Japanese. Yeah, probably. Now, there's one area in China that he was like, okay, this is the one we got to tackle. Yep. Because it was famously flood prone. It's called the Huai River in Chinese geography. Uh, you've got the Yellow River is the biggest, longest river in the northern sort of section of the country. So that's up. And you've got the Yangtze River, which is the biggest, longest river in the southern- In the downs. Of, in, in the southerny bit of the country. Yeah. Anyway, halfway between is the Huai River. It's a substantial river. There's a lot of stuff there. But the problem is that it's, of all of China, the most flood-prone bit. Damn it. Something to do with the weather systems. Like it was just historically- Lots and lots and lots of rain there, and it would just come and on down. burst of banks, and, mm. and I assume the land was flat, so it just kind of went squidge. Yeah. So okay. there, there was some severe flooding in the 1950s, and Mao said, all right, we need to harness the Huai River. Um, it's going to control the river and prevent yep. flooding, yep. and it's going to you know, do the irrigation and the electricity. Perfect. The key project in this was called the Bankiao Dam. Yep. There weren't really any dam building experts in China at the time. Cool, do it anyway. <laughs> Such what a, what a, a gentle yet auspicious way to start well, something. There well, weren't really many, you know, experts. It, it was a new thing. It was a new thing. Sure. So they brought in some people from the Soviet Union. They were friends at the time. Yeah, and the Soviets are renowned for quality works personship, particularly towards the end of the war and afterwards. Hey, maybe I'm telling you a story about a happy dam that. Uh, I, I suspect you are. <laughs> there, put concrete. There, more concrete. Maybe some rocks. <laughs> You got any old iron steel? I don't care metals. D- d- that, that, throw him in. That was part. Of, that was part of. Oh look, dead cow can't eat. <laughs> throw in them. Make a wall. It is two peoples at that time that really wanted to build things really, really quickly, and I, I think they would have done a lot of not looking into the rules and not looking into the best practice the and just or, getting it up as quick as they can. Don't you have to? Like I've often wondered. Like I've often wondered about dams. So you've got a river or whatever. Yep. And you want to block it off and yep. behind it goes tall and on the other side it doesn't. Yep. Surely you kind of got to build it quickly because the water will start rising the moment you start blocking it. If the water's constantly spewing over the top. No, there's there's techniques. Oh, you like you put up a top hole and yeah. some <laughs> tomato, what do you call them? No, Star no, pickets? No, 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 no. You, you, can, you, can, you can divert the river. Famously, you could, you could oh, dig yeah. a tunnel in advance and divert the river around it. I didn't think uh, of that. Or you could. I'm not expert. You could you keep a hole in the bottom of the dam and you build the de- the, the dam above the river and like then the you cork keep- up the hole. You're an innovator. Cork it up. Cork it. Yeah, that's back to the. Or you can get underwater it. concrete if you want. Probably don't do that. Look, look don't come to the wholesome show for Any your dam building engineering, except no. for except for where it goes wrong. We can tell you. Come for, for the emotions about it though. So the Bankiao Dam uh, was built. Uh, it took a couple of years. 118 meters high with a storage capacity. Oh. That's tall. It's 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 a tall dam. And uh, storage capacity of 492 million cubic metres, which is half a cubic kilometre, um, or pretty much bang on a Sydney harbour for the, the proper metric. <laughs> Key thing here, it was designed to withstand a one in a thousand year flood, which uh, they, they guessed to be- I've got a feeling. <laughs> they guessed to be about um, uh, half a metre of rain over a three-day period. And probably 999 years away. Because all those things are always, if it's one in a hundred years, that means it's a hundred years away. Well, and this one's a thousand. So yeah, it's, it's so not going to happen for ages. Not until the dike falls. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. Okay. But from word go, there were some problems. Were there? So firstly, the government was much more interested in the whole uh, irrigation and, and harnessing the power of the water okay. than it was worrying about flood control. The vice premier at the time said that primacy should be given to water for agriculture. All right. Um, in fact, retaining more water meant more revolutionary. So, and and worrying about uh, worrying about flooding 
that was counter-revolutionary or conservative or reactionary. So fucking idiots. <laughs> <laughs> Ideology does not trump physics ever. What? Yeah. Ever. <laughs> It just blows my mind. Whenever I hear it, I'm like, really? Really? So there was a whistleblower who was a hydrologist who was working on the project called Chen Ching. Mm-hmm. And he said, look, look, what you're designing here, <laughs> not going to work. Not going to work. And um, he said, few comments. first of all, we don't have enough sluice gates on, yeah. the, on the dam. We've got to have more. Um, uh, and it's going to cause problems downstream. Stories that start with there weren't enough insert safety device mm-hmm. here always end in a movie. Yeah. Well, he was fired. Um, of course he was. And uh, some stories say he was sent to a labour camp. Which is bullshit. They just killed him. He's probably in the den. No, no, no. No, they did not kill him. They oh. did not kill him because, well, we'll hear more from him later. Mm. Anyway, they did label him a right-wing opportunist, uh, uh-huh. fired him, sent him for re-education. I think uh-huh. that's not quite clear. Okay. The first problem, focus on the irrigation. Second mm. problem, they were cheap and they didn't put enough sluice gates in. Uh-huh. And third problem, this is a, this is a really interesting one, is – that the government was doing at the time this this intense um, new agriculture and new steel production, so they're cutting down forests all over the place, <sighs> all of the forests. Cool, and uh, yeah, that that makes rain behave a little bit differently. And no, it's great. Warm. It doesn't change weather systems. Doesn't change heat patterns. Nothing. Anyway, they got the dam built. Yay! And it was declared, possibly the Soviets or possibly the Chinese government at the time, to be an iron dam, a dam that could not be broken. Unsinkable, would you say? <laughs> You know that's like a red rag to me. Fuck, I love it. (laughs) At the beginning of August 1975, a typhoon began to form in the waters out in the Pacific Ocean between Japan, China, and the Philippines. Cool, never happened, so they wouldn't have expected it. (laughs) First typhoon ever. Ever. No, no. What a shock, yep. It started heading west. A couple of days later, it um, peaked in intensity, got to Category 4, which is a pretty strong storm. That's that's a bit of a blow. Uh, Crossed over Taiwan. On August third, I think it did some damage there, but um, I, do, I think it missed the main. It missed Taipei, but uh, did okay. some damage. Calmed down a lot when it went over the the mountains in the middle of Taiwan. Yeah, and then it kept going into China. Now, at this point, it's not a very intense typhoon anymore. It's gone down from <laughs> Category One down to a tropical storm. But <laughs> this is hold my beer territory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the, okay. wi- the wind isn't so bad, but uh, the thing is, it's still holding a shitload of water. Uh huh passes through Fujian province and yep. continues north into Henan province. And then it hits cooler air from the north. Cool. And it just starts to dump rain. Like a million people <laughs> throwing a bucket a second. and Yeah. Uh, I, yeah. So it passes over the Bankiao uh, area where the dam is. Mm. There were three storms on August 5th, 6th, and 7th. Uh, <laughs> oh, Jesus. Each of them dropped about half a metre. So you've got half a metre. A day. Half a metre a, a day. A day. Three once in a thousand year events. Yeah. This is once in 3,000 years. <laughs> wow. That's impressive. <laughs> Something like, but it was. It was three. Better buy a lottery ticket. Three hey. one in a thousand year events. So, me. in fact, in one six hour period, uh, I think they got up to um, eight, 800 mils. So close to a meter in six. I, I, I try to visualize what a meter of water coming down in a day is like. It's just. You know, we talk about rain here. I know Canberra yeah. is not the the wettest place in the world. You, you know, no. a, a big storm would be twenty mils or something like that. To get to eight hundred mils, but like, like a fifty mils storm, when they, you know, you, you've had a day where you've gone, holy shit, it crapped with rain all day yeah. today, and they go, that was forty five mils, and you're like, exactly, R- really, yeah, exactly, that was forty five. And I know that some of you out there in listener land, you come from wetter places, but still, oh. you, not in this in this chart. But um, luckily, the Iron Dam. <laughs> <laughs> so it went well. The Iron Dam was meant to handle 0.5 metres over a three-day period. So it's three times that much. By August 8th, uh, the reservoirs in the Bankyard Dam and a whole bunch of uh, other dams around uh, had filled to capacity. Cool. So they uh, opened up all of the sluice gates. They didn't have very many. The water so kept rising. Both of them. Workers were marshaled by the army to start sandbagging the top <laughs> of the dam. Let's make it taller. Hurry. That's what they were literally trying to do. Literally, they they had workers on top of the dam sandbagging it, trying to keep this flood back, which I can imagine being both – it's heroic. It's literally heroic. You are, you, are, sure. you, you are putting your life on the line in front of a giant flood of water and maybe you're going to help people downstream. But, but is pointless sacrifice heroic? Uh, I, I don't know if it's pointless. I've got a feeling it might have been. <laughs> 
I can feel it in my waters. At about 1 a.m., uh, something happened. Uh-huh. Some people said there was a noise, a, a blare, but this is where someone said visually it was like the, the sky collapsed, like uh. everything started to slide away. And I think what they're saying is the water level behind the dam. So they're looking at the water level. And it's sort of turbulent and, you know, there's yeah, lots yeah. of rain and turbulence yeah. and stuff like that, but it's not moving. But suddenly it just starts to go – and, and and your horizon starts going, whoa, what is going on? That's weird. That flat surface is now disappearing under me. And I, I, yeah. That's a good sign. It's going down. It didn't take very much. So if water gets to the top of the dam, mm-hmm. it only takes, I think it, it got to 30 centimetres over the top of the dam, like literally. Over you know, the top. A foot. That's it. Yeah. Over the, once you're over the top, then you get, then you get um, the water starts to erode. It starts to erode the top of the dam and the, uh, and the back of the dam. Uh-huh. And uh, very quickly, a few inches of water uh-huh. start racing over the top and chewing away at the dam's crest. <sighs> the dam was soon pulverized by hundreds of billions of liters of water. Pulverized. An older woman shouted, Chu Jiaozi, the river dragon has come. The dam collapsed. A rush of water, a tsunami, inland tsunami, 10 meters high and 11 kilometers wide. Oh, you're fucked. You're <laughs> fucked. 10 metres 10 meters of water. It doesn't have to move fast. It just has to move. But it's also 11 kilometres yeah. wide. It is, it's, it's a front. There is no running around yeah, this. It's like, run to the edge. It's travelling at 50 kilometres an hour oh, down into the valley. That there, fast. There's a town not far away called Daoencheng. Briefly there uh, was. Just down, yeah, briefly. 9,600 citizens. They knew lived there before. Just instantly wiped Evaporated, away. Evaporated, right? Fuck. Roads, telegraph lines, bridges, houses, people, everything is just getting swept away by this mm. incredible volume of water. Like it's Sydney Harbour just flooding instantly down out of a 10 metres high, 11 kilometres wide, moving mm. at 50 kilometres an hour. Yeah. Hoping to reduce the damage because this is, this is moving fast but it's not instant. It's 50 kilometres an yeah. hour and we're talking, you know, it's, it's hundreds of kilometres downstream to the coast. The <laughs> army started bombing the, the dams downstream to let the water out in advance. So what a situation. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. So, oh. so firstly, there's not many places to evacuate too. And the army is like, okay, if the water hits that dam, it's instantly going to destroy yeah. that dam and add the volume of water there. So if we bomb yeah, it, let's release then it it's released the dam early. So yeah. Yeah, we, we, yeah, let some pressure off. It didn't really help. Really? In total, 61 dams were pulverized. Oh, come on. Yeah. Six, six, Bang Chao was the, was the biggest. Uh, there was a couple that were, were similar, you know, a bit smaller, but, but large Six. dams. 61 uh, of different sorts of sizes. Still? Yeah. Oh. Half, some of them were bombed and some of them, uh, some of them were pulverized by the flood. And the difference was where the dudes got to go pew, pew as well. Cause, cause seriously, the, the ultimate result. All fucked. It, it, it may have helped. Like it might, it might've been the thing that it, it, you look at it and you go, can this help? I, I, we're no, going to no, try something. No, I understand. I understand I don't, the they, they were not being baddies and doing no, that. No, no, no. I think that, that actually makes a lot of sense. You just want to make it, you can kind of calm the flow. It instantly wiped out an area uh, 55 km- kilometers long uh. and 15 kilometers wide. That was just completely pulverized. Like it was just wow. wild clean. Created a, a temporary lake as large as 12,000 square kilometers. Um, <laughs> fuck. seven cities were inundated as well as were thousands of square kilometers of countryside. I'm going to jump a little ahead in the story though, because I want to note something here that, um, have you heard of this before? No. Mm, mm. You might be surprised, but, uh, the communist party of China, and this was a particular period. It was uh, in the middle of, or at the end of the cultural revolution. So yeah. there was a lot of control on the media and they, didn't, they didn't uh, tell a lot of stories. So Changed a lot, things Changed going a lot on. since then. But uh, to this day, not a lot of people in China know about this. The government, of course, knew about this and the people affected, of course, knew about it. But the story didn't really start to emerge in China until at least 20 years later and more globally in in that sort of period. It's it's impressive to be able to control shit like that that strongly because that's big. Like there there are a couple of people affected. I think think you could probably say it was a flood. And people and and not, uh, not necessarily blame the dam. It took until 1995, so 20 years later. Oh, uh, the official Chinese government news agency confirmed uh, what had happened. Uh, at, oh. th- at that time, there was. By the a, way, oops. Well, there was a book called "The Great Floods in China's History," and um, uh. and the the person who was minister for water resources 
at the time in the 70s and 80s, wrote a preface and said, and yes, there was the Bankyard Dam collapse. I just, um, uh, to, to be uh, fair, I just want to, uh, that one wasn't really quite of a uh, flood because of... Mm, mm, mm. Well, and that wasn't even confirming everything, not until 2005. It was an official state secret how many people died and, oh, and what had exactly happened. Stop it. Mm. Just stop it. Mm. Any country, I don't care, where, here, there, anywhere, stop it. So how many people died? The official figures from China now say 26,000 people died. So a million. Uh, <laughs> well, well, everything else suggests a lot, there, there's, there's no certainty on this. Of course. But it's probably around a quarter of a million people. Yeah, okay. 240,000. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Probably 100,000 died in the instant wave. Like it's something, wow. something like that that are just like straight away. Uh, I do- Dying, dying in the Foot. flood, yep. uh, and one hundred and forty thousand are dying in the famines and the and the, the epidemics, the and the diseases, yeah, yeah, yeah. and all of yep. that that happened yep. afterwards. And this is this is this is the interesting thing. We don't have a lot of footage. We don't have there's footage of the Bankyard Dam, like a, a picture of the Bankyard Dam, yeah. uh, but there's no footage of this happening. And it didn't grab visual impact. And so hmm. there was a Discovery Channel did a list of the top ten technological disasters of the twentieth century. And Chernobyl was on that list. And I think Chernobyl was number two. Yeah. But, but the Bankyard Dam, like in terms of in terms of the impact, it's it's just vast. But no one really knew about it. The Chinese government said uh, it was a it was a natural failure. They said, look, this was it was built to a, a one in one thousand year flood, but this was a one in two thousand year flood. So three. Well, sure. Who's who's? What could we do? Can, what can, could can, we do? Can't you love the whole? Why did it happen? It was a natural man. It was a natural failure. Like what? Of course, it was a natural failure. Naturally, you didn't know what the fuck you were doing. You know, you know. This goes back. We we talked about this ages ago. I think it was on the potato famine. There's no such thing as a natural disaster. There are natural hazards. Yeah. Any any disaster has human bits in it. Like either it's it's a disaster because we suffer, yeah. or we make it worse, yeah. or yeah. whatever. Yeah. There, there's no just natural disaster. Yep, wrath of God. Shit. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Afterwards, Chen Jiang, the whistleblower who yeah. said you're not building the dam, yeah. he was drafted in to um, to help rebuild the dam as well. So, and did he say, I, 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 let's, I, I, I don't want to. Let's do it properly this time. I don't want it. Can we have four sluices this time? <laughs> and around the world, dam building is back in fashion. It's not quite as big uh, as it was in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, yeah. but uh, there's a massive dam building spree going on around the world, and China is taking part in a lot of this. Uh-huh. There's something like 4,000 major hydroelectric dams that are in planning or construction. In planning, not in yeah. existence. Yeah. To come. Yeah. Yeah. There's there's a lot. And the thing that, thing that is worth remembering is the Bankiao Dam is – Definitely the worst version of this disaster. Mm. Uh, well, okay, the worst accidental version of this disaster. <laughs> There's deliberate? You're talking about the dam busters from 1944? I'll tell you the deliberate in a sec. Yeah. But we don't have to go very far back to look at um, other examples of dam collapses. Mm. There's the Machuchu Dam in India, which collapsed in 1979, killing 25,000. The Vajont Dam in Italy in 1959 killed 2,000. Hmm. St. Francis Dam in California, 1928, killed 600. Uh, the Malpasset Dam in France, 1959, kills 421. So um, these these are not just developing countries. Oh, this the is, dams this burst, yeah, yeah. Lots of dams. Yeah, yeah. In 2019, uh, the Brumadinho Dam in Brazil burst, killing 270. In July 2018, a Korean-built dam collapsed on the border of Laos and Cambodia, hmm. killing hundreds. But we don't really know because it's not an area where we know a lot about what's going on. Right. Dams are dangerous. Dams are absolutely – Why? I don't doubt that dams have have done a lot of good, and certainly they can prevent floods, sure. and certainly they can bring yeah. irrigation. But of course, here's, they're dangerous. There's there's a couple of things that yeah. we've got dams around the world that are getting older, uh-huh. and they sit above cities yeah. all around the world, yeah. all around the world. This is not a this is not a uh, corrupt country thing mm. or a, or mm. a good country thing or anything like that. This is this is a problem around the world that we have a lot of old dams, and they are a weapon of mass destruction sitting straight mm. above all of our cities. Now, so, should I be worried about Scrivener Dam in Canberra? Because <laughs> Probably not. That, it's that could new. kill some 
kangaroos. <laughs> but I said, you know, uh, this was the worst accidental version. Mm. It's not the worst version of a, mm. of a dam collapse. Mm -hmm. the, the, the worst version of a, of a dam collapse was deliberate. Again, we don't know heaps about this, but it's it's from a different era in China. In 1930s, uh, Chiang Kai-shek uh, was yep. fighting a war against the Japanese yeah. and decided, well, we could flood this area by, by tunneling through these dams and, and, and bursting them. And it stopped the Japanese, but it killed 800,000 people. So yeah, yeah, but what, you're focusing on the negative. It stopped the Japanese. <laughs> 800,000. The biggest uh, weapons of mass destruction that we have are sitting right above. Or well, that we've cities. used. Yes, and that we've used. Yeah. Is that we have? Or, oh, no. Yeah, okay. Okay. But that we've. Fair enough. That have been implemented. But they're sitting all around the world. And I think. Uh. Dams, dams are great. Dams do a lot of wonderful things, mm -hmm. but uh, we can have a conversation about them, I think. Just do.